Imagine a world composed solely of a single, endless desert. What extreme forms of life might we find here? Would this be a world of microscopic organisms or of unfathomable giants? Arrakis, also called Dune, is the titular planet at the center of the world-famous science fiction book and recent film of the same name. Although the planet is a desert of intense heat and extreme scarcity, it is also abundant with unexpected life. So join me in this tour of the ecosystems of Arrakis, which will dive deep into the extended material from the books and other sources. We'll uncover how such fantastical forms of life might function, and find biological analogs in the most unexpected places on our own planet. So let's begin our expedition across Arrakis, and be sure to walk without rhythm. Few places in the universe compare to Arrakis. In terms of precipitation, the planet is as dry as the surface of Mars. Compared to such a world, Earth is a land practically overflowing with water. Desert animals on Earth have evolved countless strategies to survive the intense heat and sand, but many of these adaptations will be of little use on Arrakis. Yet according to the novel, virtually all species on planet Arrakis were introduced from elsewhere, so some familiar creatures must be able to endure this climate. As we set off to find some, stay close, for the desert takes the weak. Hopping across the sands is a very special form of jumping desert rodent. Known as Muad'Dib by the local Fremen populace, this hopping rodent is an introduced species from Earth called a gerboa. A creature that lives in the hottest regions of North Africa and Asia, gerboas are excellent fits for the brutal deserts of Arrakis, where they have evolved an unexpected new behavior. The Vianel film shows the Muad'Dib collecting dew gathered on its ears for moisture. This behavior is highly convergent with the survival strategy of one of the most extreme desert life forms on Earth the Namib Desert Darkling Beetles. On foggy desert days, these beetles collect water droplets on their body's surface thanks to specialized hydrophilic bumps on their forewings. This incredible behavior, known as fog basking, requires the beetles to stay motionless for long periods in this posture, which allows for the collected water to trickle down into their mouths. Looking at the species' hydrophilic zones under magnification reveals just how advanced their miniature moisture farms have become. So, it is likely the ears of the Arakeen Muad'Dib rodent possess similar hydrophilic zones to facilitate the collection of water from the atmosphere. In this extremely arid environment, very few species of introduced plants have been able to take root. Certain genuses of cacti are some of the only flora that can endure the scorching Arakeen sun. And aside from the Muad'Dib, only a small number of earth animals have managed to sustain an existence in this land of scarcity. According to the book, a genus of desert hawks has successfully survived its mid-sized predators and an unspecified genus of desert foxes have also made their home here, filling a similar niche. But these predators are comically low on the food chain compared to the largest and most famous lifeform on Arrakis. No species holds more power or commands more awe than the mighty sandworm, a creature of endless biological mysteries. The common name of these colossi calls back to the tiny worms of Earth, although the two share no genetic relation. While sandworms and earthworms are both lifeforms with tube-shaped body plants that burrow underground in search of organic matter, the main difference, of course, comes in their size. Earthworms average a few inches or centimeters long, whereas sandworms can reach 1,400 feet or 450 meters in length. In sheer volume, the closest thing we have on Earth to a sandworm are the largest species of whales. And in the recent film especially, sandworms seem to have a lot in common with whales, with their teeth almost looking like baleen. This makes a lot of sense, as in whales, baleen bristles are highly effective at filtering the vast schools of tiny organisms that whales feed on to reach their ridiculous sizes. And we know from the Dune books that sandworms have a very similar food source, which helps make their absurd sizes a bit more realistic. 
We'll discuss the surprising food source of the sandworms soon. For now, there's another great mystery of the sandworms we need to solve. How could a creature swim through the sand? Sand as we know it is made up of a granule material. Not exactly good for a creature to swim through. Well, it's possible that sandworms are able to make the sand of Arrakis behave a bit more like water through a process called fluidization. The concept of fluidizing a granule material like sand might sound like science fiction, but scientists have long been able to achieve this by introducing gas, which surprisingly makes sand behave like a liquid. And it's not just scientists who have figured this out. When earthly sand-swimming animals like the wedge-snouted skink burrow, their movements create more fluid-like sand that is easier to move through. And the recent film seems to imply that sandworms swim through the dunes of Arrakis via a similar process, by having the sand subtly liquefy before they surface. Notably, sandworms can also sense rhythmic vibrations in irregular shifts on the surface of the sand, and aggressively pursue the origin of such vibrations to defend their territory. Once again, there are numerous surprising examples in nature of animals that can sense vibrations to track other life forms, including snakes and, perhaps more surprisingly, frogs. But the most intriguing example for our purposes are spiders, which can detect subtle tremors caused by panicking prey caught in their web. Spiders can detect these irregular vibrations thanks to macroreceptory organs on their exoskeleton called silt sensilia. It's possible that sandworms possess their own macroreceptory organs to allow them to hear vibrations on the surface. And when a sandworm surfaces, it's quite the spectacle. As a result of static electricity being released into positively charged air, dry lightning illuminates the Arachene sky. Seeing a sandworm breaching would likely be like witnessing the approach of a deity. And some sandworms might be even more impressive. There are rumors in the novel of worms that grow up to 2,000 to 3,000 feet, or 700 to 1,000 meters in the southern polar regions, although this is never confirmed. So what are these creatures' food source? To find the abundant life that feeds the great sandworm, one must take a sample of the sand and look under a microscope. The lower sands of Arrakis are filled with planktonic life, which the sandworm feeds on. But what's most bizarre is that these tiny organisms, called sand plankton, are actually the larval stage of the sandworms. That's right, the sandworms feed on members of their own species, and are both the foundation and top predators of the Arachene ecosystem. But is such a bizarre cyclical food chain even possible? Once again, a potential answer lies in nature. Studies of North American tiger salamanders have uncovered a highly bizarre and somewhat similar life cycle. Most tiger salamander larvae are small creatures with round, almost non-existent teeth which proliferate in large numbers. On rare occasions, however, some larvae morph into larger organisms with wide mouths and enlarged teeth. And honestly, they look a bit like sandworms from certain angles. And like the sandworms, these predators feed primarily on the smaller larvae of their own kind. And there is one other stage of the sandworm's life cycle, the blob-like intermediary form of the sand trout, or the little makers. Although these slow, amoebic forms might not seem significant, their biological processes naturally create one of the most important substances in the Dune universe, the spice melange. In Dune, the spice is one of the most valuable substances due to its effect on the human mind, unlocking the key to interstellar navigation and having so much sway it can topple empires. So it might sound unusual that it comes from a routine process of an organism like a sand trout. Yet numerous earth animals, from frogs to sea slugs, naturally produce concentrations of unique chemicals with valuable medical and scientific applications. Granted, the sci-fi powers of the spice are far more extreme, but Arrakis is a planet of extremes. It is a world where the very smallest and very largest life forms play a role in the destiny of all who venture into the desert. And although we're at the end of our investigation of this perilous and mysterious world, remember the great desert can never be understood in its entirety. And as always, thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this entry, please help make this work possible by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.